so now we will turn to one of our pilots, uh, Surfoteka from the retail sector in Poland, and you will hear from the hub and the company that implemented this pilot. So we will have Przemek from representing DIC for EU, uh, and we will have Roman representing Surfoteka, the company that implemented the pilot. And what I want to say as a brief introduction here is that this really is a success story. So someone in the chat was asking about companies uh, that were SMEs and lower on the digitalization um, journey. And uh, this is especially a case like this, that company that in a rather difficult situation after a fire at their premises managed to implement uh, a digital solution and increase their digital maturity score quite significantly. So I think it will be quite an inspiring case uh, for everyone to hear. And what we will have now is a short presentation uh, by uh, Przemek, and then we will have a brief Q&A session. So again, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat and we'll try to ask them. Uh, and I pass the floor to Przemek and Roman. Thank you, Ruta. <clears throat> uh, hello, good morning, everyone. I hope you hear me well. Um, I guess it's who? Uh, Romek, can you say something? So that we know that we can also hear you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Now, please, Przemek, tell okay. about us. Cool. So, yeah, we're on the same page. Uh, I can actually start with addressing one of the questions that were asked. So, yes, I will tell you how much of HR uh, or stuff we needed for this project in terms of the Surfoteca. And the second thing is that uh, if you think of the companies that are or are not digitalized and the DMI scores from the beginning and the end, uh, please note that it was uh, like the project itself, it was for like a six months. So if you're far farther in terms of the digitalization of your company, within six months time frame, it could be hard to actually significantly increase something because it really requires a deep dive uh, like any improvement actually requires a deep dive and the less you have the easier the deep dive is. Uh, so yeah, let's go with the presentation. Uh, please Barbara uh, for the next slide. So um, yeah, something about the company. You've heard about the Surfoteca. You would normally connect this sort of business with Portugal, but Surfoteca is actually located in Northern Poland. We also have the sea and we also have surfers, fortunately. Uh, and yeah, so what is the type of the company? So if any of you has ever been in the seaside, you've probably seen a place like this. So you enter the shop uh, and there is everything everywhere. There are some helpful people trying to aid you in making some sort of a choice. Uh, offering some prices on some certain goods. And uh, this is primarily how the surf shop looks like. And this is exactly how Surfoteca used to look like. And uh, it was not only the one physical location where the company was located, but actually there was also two pop-up stores located somewhere uh, outside the main location. And uh, if you think of it as a stocks management, and if you think of it in terms of like the business management, then uh, it was hardly working. It, it was not hardly working in terms of the revenue because still there were the clients and there were the helpful people hanging around trying to sell something to you. But if you add e-commerce to this sort of management, so you have your web shop where people can browse through some stocks, and uh, then you're also thinking of a social media selling, you're posting something somewhere, you're using some other external retail platforms to sell some goods of yours, then you end up in the situation uh, in which Surfoteca ended up, which is uh, it was hardly ever possible to find something or to know where is this actual thing located, or if they actually do have this piece of assortment that somebody actually wants. So essentially, there were three different different warehouses located in different locations that didn't have the central system that would manage those stocks. And there was no system for informing the other points of selling that something has actually been purchased, which means that all the stocks that were on the warehouses were actually virtual. OK, I lost the slide, but I say it now. Uh, so the stocks uh, were unknown pretty much. So uh, it's not so bad if you can sell the things that you don't have if people are paying, but what problems does it cause to the business? And in terms of Surfoteca, it was like a pretty big overhead in terms of the processing of the order. Because if somebody goes to your web shop in the low season, which is essentially after summer, uh, and is trying to purchase some goods, and then you see that somebody has purchased 
whatever kind of gear that you actually don't have, then you're trying to communicate to the customer that, hey, dear customer, I don't have this, but I can offer you that for another price, maybe something of bigger quality, something more expensive, I'll just discount uh, to the price that you wanted to pay, uh, which doesn't lose your customers, gives you the big uh, or good ratings of the customer experience, because this is what Serpoteca is famous for. But on the other hand, uh, it doesn't really help you uh, do business because you're losing your margins or you're going under margins just to keep the customer satisfied. So that was essentially the state of uh, Surfoteca when we started talking about the participation in this pilot. And to add something to this situation, uh, it was already mentioned by Ruda, but uh, Surfoteca had a fire uh, in the fall, uh, the physical fire. So the main warehouse was actually burned to the ground uh, with more or less all the stocks because there was some 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 stocks that were actually recovered but primarily everything was just burned down uh, which actually helps in the digital intervention but we don't actually uh, recommend doing this to all the companies that might have this kind of problems but uh, so yeah there was a fire uh, which kind of opened a new perspective for the company uh, because fortunately the insurance company did pay out uh, what they had uh, or what, they, what was claimed. So essentially the company stood in front of the uh, like new year, new season, uh, new potential challenges and no systems, no stocks. So that was quite a good moment to actually rethink and redo everything that uh, was not working in the company. So what we decided even before the fire was to uh, digitalize the whole process of customer uh, or dealing with customer experience. So what we wanted to have uh, we wanted to be able to know what assortment do we have, where is it actually located, so to centrally manage the warehouses, to centrally manage the stocks, so that if there is something being sold in one physical point of sales, we would like to see that in our web shop immediately, not to sell twice the same good that we uh, don't really have on our stocks. Uh, we wanted to have it all integrated so that even though we may decide to use the social media selling on some other external platform like Allegro or eBay or whatever else, it would be integrated with the warehouse and we would be informed uh, about any purchases made done uh, through that channel. Another thing which is connected to that, we also wanted to unify the customer experience in terms of like the messaging they re receive when they're purchasing things online, the shipping that we manage uh, in terms of like the shipping of our goods uh, and also the billing process. So all of these are kind of connected, but previously, depending on each and every platform that was used or each and every point of sales that was being used, they were actually not really uniform. Uh, okay. So the solution, what was the solution for that? The solution was to actually pick some sort of an IT tool that would be uh, appropriate for this particular company. Uh, and yes, it states here that uh, finally we use the Fakturovnia software uh, along with some other like base linker to integrate the, uh, the social media and so on. But uh, the problem here was that initially uh, our requirements and actually uh, they, they were quite different before we learned what was actually burned in the fire because during the fire the company has also lost the primary server for the primary warehouse which was not cloud-based at the time and then we realized that we actually do not have any source uh, or list of our assortment so we essentially didn't have inventory knowledge at all even though it was all burned but it would be still nice to know how it is uh, structured so the whole project actually needed to rebuild the whole inventory and instead of integrating the old warehouse into the new solution which was the primary intention of the project we decided to pick the new tool that's going to be cloud-based because the old tool was dead anyway uh, so that we could actually use it uh, as a central warehouse that's going to be the primary and the first source of truth for the whole company to which then we port the other selling solutions and uh, what was our role in this whole thing so uh, first, it was probably to encourage the company uh, to actually participate. Uh, and then, uh, because, uh, I mean, if you're living in a surfing world, then you're not always at the spot. And uh, if you ask Romek in a second, where is he physically located? Then he will say, yeah, so I'm in Canary Islands and maybe I'm at, in Poland now, but maybe I'm going to leave to Canary Islands again because his family likes to spend time over there. And I kind of understand that. So uh, it is quite tough to actually manage this kind of a project. Uh, 
if we are scattered and if uh, there is a primary <laughs> physical location of the, of the company that's actually burned. So uh, that was quite tricky. And our role was actually pulling this whole process through. Because in the end, uh, when we discussed it internally, when we discussed it with uh, the other participants of this pilot, then we figured out that uh, in this process, uh, we as a hub were actually uh, driving this whole, I, I've lost the slide. Okay, say it again. Uh, so we were driving this whole process and ensuring that everything is happening on the way. And uh, usually, because if you think of the other the projects that were mentioned here, so implementation of 50 data reading points and so on, these are quite big. And what is super important about this particular project here is that it's not so budget intensive. And uh, this is not actually a huge endeavor that's going to change everything or you're buying a lot of things that you need to integrate and implement. It's not this kind of a project because in the retail, oftentimes if you're trying to connect the selling activities online and offline, it's, it's not a tool that is so important, but it's the, like the data structuring and so on. You need to think of it. You need to rethink the structure of the business that is usually in Poland growing incrementally like Serpoteca for about 20 years. Uh, you're just adding things without thinking on how is it structured. And if you want to do this sort of implementation, then you rather need to rethink how is it going to be shaped, but not necessarily the tools because they're the cheapest part of that if you compare how much time you need to spend. And uh, as Serpoteca didn't have the resources, because as we mentioned, they were burned. They didn't even have a place to sell things and they didn't have things. So actually at the lowest point, it was the owner and his wife uh, and one person responsible for the service of, of the equipment that were actually employed or semi-connected with Serpoteca during this whole project. So uh, with this and with all the burden they had uh, because of the situation they, uh, they were left in, uh, we were the owner of this whole process, but we were helping to choose uh, to choose the solutions. We we're actually picking the solution, comparing what's available in the market and helping this whole mapping process because we have experience or we could ask some other companies that are collaborating with the hub so that we finally get to the, uh, to the end point. And I think that the first major takeaway from what I'm saying here is that, thank you, uh, is that, uh, the hub needs to be driving things uh, or the single point of contact ideally within a hub needs to be driving things because otherwise this is something that's probably not going to happen. And here we see how it was shaped uh, in terms of the timeline step by step. So obviously you need to define some sort of the digital strategy, which is based on the current situation. Uh, the digital maturity was assessed by Romek that, yeah, we don't have it. So <laughs> that was uh, that was it. Uh, but they were not on a zero actually because they were operating the web shop anyway. Uh, and it didn't change much from the uh, how it looks like per perspective because everything that happened here actually happened uh, under the cover uh, or under the hood. So then obviously gathering the requirements for uh, adoption of the new platform. Uh, we did it twice because first we wanted to use the integration with the base linker tool. Then we realized that we don't have the warehouse to integrate, so we needed to create a central warehouse with Fakturovnia. So that's what happened. Then we created the warehouse at Fakturovnia and started porting things out to Fakturovnia with the use of the base linker, if necessary. Uh, what is quite interesting, uh, obviously porting social media is also a part of porting to the central warehouse. And the stage we are at now still is integration of the physical channel because as Romek will say probably in a uh, couple of minutes uh, the Surfoteca is now opening the pop-up store uh, in other location uh, just as every year uh, because the season for uh, for water sports is coming actually during the May weekend it's like the huge load of uh, people rushing to the physical stores in terms of the surfing gear and then we'll have a break uh, so we'll be able to actually finally uh, finalize finalize uh, all the integrations on the physical stores we do actually still need to make here. And what's also important is that uh, we will also be doing, because the pro project is finished, but it's not finished. And that's another cool takeaway from the digitalization. So once you start, you start. So uh, there is probably no other way back. Uh, so we need to continue with this. And we will be uh, inventorying the new stocks because everything is scheduled to come after the May weekend. So probably in the middle of the May, we will be adding a lot of new inventories apart from those that we have already. Uh, 
into this whole software infrastructure. So please for the next slide. Okay, so what have we achieved? Uh, it's also quite important. As we have mentioned before, uh, the biggest problem from this whole mess that uh, Serpoteca used to have is the fact that there were a lot of uh, incorrect orders. Incorrect order being we sell something we don't have, or we actually offer something we don't have, or it's being sold somewhere else. And since we started, uh, the number of such orders is zero, which is super good. The other good thing is that uh, from all the databases that Surfoteca used to have, uh, there is now only one single source of truth, which is quite in line with the whole industry for all and digitalization strategies, which is good. And uh, we already exceeded, I mean, uh, I don't know if it's ambitious or not, like the target of five orders, but in low season in the water sport industry, I think it is. Uh, so we actually had uh, for the time of making the report, the six uh, orders from the new sales channels that were actually ported or integrated to the central warehouse. So these are the results. Obviously, they go along with uh, some DMA uh, increase. But it, what is super important is that we have the single source of truth. That's something we are really proud of and we are happy, really happy because it really increases a lot the efficiency of the whole company. Uh, we are standardized in uh, terms of the customer uh, relations. And uh, it is way easier to actually show someone how the company works, because if the season is coming, then you need to hire additional people that will work in the physical locations and try to handle uh, a lot of things uh, that are happening over there. And having the structured tools that are actually on top of structured processes and the ways you actually uh, work within the company, because previously the company didn't really have any uh, description of what is it doing. And I think that if you work with SMEs, that's the typical thing. And even though it may be an ISO certified SME, then they have the standard ISO process that somebody sold them for like 2000 euro. And then anyway, they don't know what they're doing. So uh, that was the case here as well. Uh, now it is structured. So in terms of onboarding, uh, it is way easier because you can just show to the people that, okay, guys, so this is how we work. This is how we process this. There is no multiple tools and logins and passwords that you need to give them to actually show them how to log into this platform and check for the orders and so on. So it's way easier, uh, which means maybe uh, it, it doesn't mean that you need less qualified people. You need people with the same qualifications, but on the other hand, they will be more focused on selling and actual development of the company than handling the internal issues, uh, which was their primary load uh, back in time. Uh, so these are the results. Uh, I think there will be probably a lot of questions, but I would also like to add one more thing in the end, uh, maybe to start some discussion uh, on the, in the other direction. Uh, and this other thing is uh, you may be thinking of how do you budget it if you're a company and if you have like a six month time frame and if you uh, have your site burned. So how do you do transformation? How do we approach this finance wise? Because the other things probably Romek will answer in a second. But actually, as I said, it's not budget intensive. And this is the biggest uh, advantage and disadvantage at once. Because if you look at the EU fundings that we have or possible grants and so on, this type of a project, which I believe would hugely improve 95% of retail businesses uh, running over the internet in Poland right now today. Uh, this project doesn't qualify for any grant because it's too small and it's too simple. And uh, the way we assess those finance, uh, the way we assess projects in the financing schemes is that it, it needs to be super innovative. It needs to you know, change the whole world and so on. And uh, I think that this project, maybe that's why we were picked over here, uh, is a good example of how much, because the factor of it costs like, I don't know, 1000 euro a year, maybe. Is it much? No. It's super cheap. And if you think of the company that facing the tremendous cash flow problems, you still cannot afford it, uh, but there is no other way for you to finance it. And I think that uh, there are projects, not only in the retail industry, but in all the industries that are actually sub EU funding budget level. They are or could be super revolutionary for the company, op company operation, would yield like tremendous results, but there is no way uh, to proceed with those because there is no right source of financing for that. And with this, we are actually helping Surfoteca as a hub to, to, to face the challenge. But I don't think that this model is actually scalable 
because we, we we don't have the budget for this sort of operations anyway. Maybe there is a call like this, so we can apply to, to have those budgets. But still, I believe that this is a huge room for improvement in terms of the whole ecosystems, that there are projects that are cheap and yield great results, but still companies cannot afford them, especially when operating in the tough conditions we have right now. So yeah, just wanted to underline this thing while I'm opening myself and Romek for the questions, if any. Yes, and thank you very much for presenting Servitech as pilot. I liked very much what you said. Once you start digitalizing, it never finishes, it never ends. And I think that's very accurate. Um, we also have several questions in the chat, but before that, I wanted to bring in Roman and just ask what made you decide to participate in this pilot? What convinced you? Uh, sorry. For me, it's the most important that after 20 years work on this season shops, uh, we have so many problems with the customers from internet. It's not from us that we have, uh, how to say is because season work is very intensive. We work like 20, 40 hours in, we sell in the normal shop stationary shop some stuff and it's not time uh, change on the website and something like this it always we in effect of this we receive so many problems in next days that we must translate our customers that we sell something and offering the next things in cheaper price because we need to keep the our customers and now like the Przemek said after fire we know that this is a time the cleaning this and of course it's not easy made like this we just before really important most important month before us because season starts in june in my opinion we need finish everything before season and i strong believe that will be success now we have some effects about this and i i think that is like Przemek said is not uh, expensive for us but i think I, i'm quite sure that after season I we are very we be are we are be happy after this. Sorry for my English. Well, thank you for the answer. And I think that's very good to hear that you see that this after the season you're expecting to see some positive results. Um, I think we also yeah. had a lot of questions about this, and I know uh, that you touched upon this in the presentation already, but uh, maybe a question to you both. What steps did you take to analyze the digitalization needs and specifically select the software solution? It to me or to Roman because I didn't hear. I guess it's to me. Um, you can start. Maybe <laughs> Roman can add. Uh, I will answer because uh, yeah. So we chose this software because it fit uh, the requirements that we've had and other companies we work uh, with, like uh, other SMEs that are actually working in the retail. Uh, they use it and it works. And that, that's the primary reason. And I've seen uh, in the chat uh, another question. Uh, and why, why did we pick something we know? Because we just changed from the other software because we learned that we don't have the warehouse. Because before we thought we have the warehouse software, which was like Comark of Tima or something, I don't remember the ERP system, but it was not a cloud-based system and it was burned along with the server. So uh, somewhere in the middle of, of talking, actually we were sitting with Romek, we switched on the base linker, I configured the things on the customer end, and then I was like, okay, so let's add the warehouse. And Romek said, yeah, but hmm, I don't have a login, let's check. And it was, yeah, it was on the server that was actually burned. I was like, cool, so yeah, let's start it over. Uh, yeah, so th that's what happened. And the reason why we do it, uh, why we did it, is because we knew the solution and it was easier for us to implement. And there's another question connected to that in the chat. Sorry, Romek, I'll let you in a second. Uh, which is, uh, how did you choose this and, uh, how did you select? Do we have a list of partners? Do we have like, uh, and the questions touch the objectivity criteria. So were we objective in choosing the system? The, the answer is no. We were subjective because we were working with a company. And uh, this is how we operate. By the way, we are not anymore. We used to run the digital innovation hub that was EU funded. Now we are self-funded, which means we struggle with funding sometimes. But on the other hand, we are 
free to recommend things uh, that make things efficient. And I believe that this is pretty good for us and pretty cool for us because we can make things fast and we can make them work instead of comparing everything and finally getting into the tender and somebody bids better with something that is cheaper and we're actually not able to assist anymore. So, so that's how we picked it. It was 100% subjective decision in our case. Romek, do you add something? Thank you. Thank you. Translate this very well. OK, so we good. All right. Well, thank you for the answer. I hope that answers the questions in the chat, because indeed, I think there were four or five questions specifically about choosing the solution. Um, another one was about whether the actual innovation in this case was not just adopting another digital solution, but looking at it from a more systematic perspective, if that was one of the kind of actual added values of this pilot, in your opinion? Mm, yeah, I think, uh, as I said, uh, the company was growing for 20 years with no plan. Like the plan was to, to buy and sell, like the retail plan, like the typical retail plan. And uh, I believe, and we believe at the uh, for you that actually like any implementation or use of digital tools should be uh, justified when you're trying to solve some problem that is being solved by this particular solution. So this is why we picked, like cherry picked Fakturovnia because we believe it solved the problem that Romek had. And if we focus on the digital solutions, then we become a digital solution selling company uh, that doesn't actually think of problems, which is uh, abundant in the today's market. If you think of cobots, ERP systems, whatever, like everything is being sold without thinking of the customers that are in the end. And we are trying to kind of fill this gap and to uh, first think of what problem are we solving, like the real problem. Because if we wanted to get EU funding for this, we would probably think of some other additional problems just to pump up the project so that it's bigger, more significant, and looks more innovative, maybe. Uh, here, we didn't do that. We, uh, we did it with a commercial budget. And what we did and what we wanted to achieve is actually to catch the solution of the problem, which is really not the tool. Tool is just the implementation layer of the long process of thinking on how to increase the uh the operation capabilities of a company the same with robots you can buy a cobot everybody can buy a cobot but in the end what does it help you do if the process you're automating it's not needed or you can throw it out of your company uh to some supplier to make to make them do something then why would you actually automate something which is not necessary so this is our approach and uh yeah so that's how i uh, address it. So the primary innovation, I don't really think it's innovative what we did. It's not innovative. It's uh, a game changer for the company, but everything is known for like more than 10 years what we did in this particular process. Does it mean it is innovation? Yes, it is innovation because if we use digital tools to improve operating capabilities of a company, this is what all the hubs in the world want to do. That's what who you want in your hubs, in the pool of customers, but it doesn't mean you have to buy the newest thing to solve the problem that doesn't exist. Sometimes it's just very simple and like this. Thank you, and I think that's a very important point indeed, that you don't always need the highest tech solution and sometimes something that has existed in the market for a while now can be a game changer uh, for a company, depending on where it is in its digitalization journey. Um, and actually following up on this, I also wanted to ask what results are already visible for you, Ramek, uh, at this current stage? What benefits do you see? Uh, true is that uh, for me is the most important uh, that our work was more simple. It's not easy to translate, especially in my age, for the next days calling to bad customers that I sell something one day before and I not made change on the internet. And and also uh, is maybe maybe Premek say, but my English not, not, not so good. For me is the uh, really, uh, really important this factor of yeah, make uh, possibility to connect with our biggest uh, partners that also we we connected uh, the warehouse for 
for, from our partners and they opening uh, more and more possibility for, for us. And for effect, we wait, uh, we wait. I'm, I'm quite uh, sure that will be work okay because we have now one really good employers next to come in next month and many things are now is more clear for us. And I'm I'm really optimist about this. And I I'm not expect like the that we receive some extra more money, more I for me it's most important that we receive like the more quiet work. And then effect it's gone. Better more 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 profit for us. For me it's most important nice work. I don't know what to say. Thank you for the answer. I think uh, a very closely linked question then is um, what are the next steps? Because someone also in the chat is asking about what from the hub's perspective will the, be the follow up. And of course, also, um, I guess from the company's perspective, it's important to understand if the digitalization never ends, what happens next? Okay, so I can start. Uh, what happens next? Uh, as I said, we didn't finish working, so there are new uh, there are new shipments of goods coming. So we need to redo the inventory. We need to open the new and I say we because we are still in the process. And to address one of the companies that are back uh, on the chat, which asked, didn't the hub with its roles duplicate the role of technology implementer? Uh, actually, we don't. Uh, because we want, uh, in the end, we want Romek to be fully aware of what's happening. So what we can do uh, is we can, obviously there are some training resources available online and there are some companies that are selling the service of implementation of Factorovia to whatever place. But what we want Romek to be left with is he being aware of what he has, what the capabilities are, and how to operate with this, because it's easy. I mean, all, the, all those systems that are, you know, created after the year 2000 are quite easy to use and the user experience is pretty nice. So that's what we want, that's our goal. That's why I say we and we will do this and we will do that. And uh, uh, and addressing the role of the hub over there, I believe this is exactly the role of the hub. Uh, we like it, we don't like it, it doesn't matter. If we want the like the fully aware transformation, we need to have the beneficiaries that understand what has been done because if we don't, they will be forever vendor locked and you know paying invoices for people coming to them and saying click here and do that. We don't want it because we operate on the commercial budgets again. We do and Surfoteca does as well. So that's why. So Romek, what are the next steps? Inventory. <laughs> no, finish in inventory, but it's uh, I think it's quite easy to do it and next step you will be connected from the another warehouse and of course you are just before biggest uh, ordering they coming in the middle of the Mai. And uh, I think that for me, like I said, it's the most important that we clean clean the, our contact with customers because season is very intensive and customer is not like that deciding sometimes few days by new board finally decide and in effect of this day they are calling two days ago later and say, sorry, we have not. You sell this board one day before. And for that, 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 that is for me is most important. Yeah. That clean, cleaning the situation, warehouse and the stationary stuff. Because is uh Przemek don't say that uh, about this three years, uh, no, two years before we decide put everything with warehouse, uh, with electronic system, but it's not a cloud. And in effect of the fire, all our work is completely destroyed. And then for me, uh, that if we, if we put now for the cloud, it's also more easier work from the stational season shop because all things we can make by phone and clean uh, the, uh, the, the, we're going to just stand magazine, for me. Like in real in real time, that, that, that that's for me is most important. Then we decide to put everything to cloud. And so, tam przemek wytłumacz, no, o co mi chodzi. 
I think it was quite clear. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Very clear. <laughs> Um, and thank you. Thank you for the presentation and this discussion. Um, I think it's some very important and hopefully inspirational takeaways uh, from this case. And uh, I really liked uh, uh, what you said about the need to under to have the beneficiary understand what has been done and to be able to use it to have this knowledge transfer. And for the company, of course, being able to have clarity, being able to communicate well with customers. These more business oriented needs are very, very important. And then in this collaboration, the hub understanding that can be very valuable. Um, so in the chat, we have several other questions. I know we cannot in, in terms of time address all of these, unfortunately. Uh, but again, we'll try to address them in other presentations or through the chat. Um, and thank you everyone for participating and thank you for your presentations and the discussion. And I will hand back to